episode nine. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for listening to the Just Forking Around podcast. Join Debbie as she features a rotating cast of guests, which include restaurateurs, creative chefs, kick-ass servers, wicked cool winemakers, fresh farmers, and frankly, anyone who plays a pivotal part in this beautifully insane, sexy world of food and beverage. Explore with Debbie how they did what they did, why they do what they do, and discover, if you want, how you can too. Hey everybody, how are y'all doing today? I'm doing awesome, hope you are too. This next episode, if you got past the title, then you are ready to listen. And so you are prepared to hear the truths about perimenopause and menopause. This episode is awesome. I have Ellen Dolgen, E-L-L-E-N-D-O-L-G-E-N, who is just spectacular in the way that she speaks about menopause and perimenopause and hormone imbalance. And the, why this is so important is that I know that for me and for uh, anybody that I've spoken with just mentioning it, menopause, everyone's like, ooh, yeah, uh, I don't know about that. So it's, it's an uncomfortable uh, feeling that people get sort of when you say menopause. <laughs> so I thought it was important to have Ellen on the show. She's amazing. She's an author, a blogger, a speaker, health and wellness and menopause awareness advocate. She's been on Katie Couric. She's been on Today Show. She was just in New York on another show I just saw on Facebook. So she's she's been around the circuit. She She's very, very entertaining in her delivery. She's fun. And I, again, I just thought it was really important to be able to share this topic with you all. And we do talk about food, diet, restaurants, eating out. <laughs> I actually met Ellen at a restaurant that I, she had uh, frequented often in San Diego. And that's actually how we became uh, friends, I would say. Yes, friends. And her and her husband are amazing. And she's just a great, great person. And I'm really excited to share with you this next episode with Ellen Dolgen. I want to thank you all for listening. I appreciate you. And I want to thank you for rating and reviewing this podcast if you enjoy on iTunes. Uh, rating and reviews are very important. Um, so if you enjoyed, please go to iTunes and rate and review. Now let's get into what this contest stuff is all about. At the beginning of every episode, we have a contest question. To participate, simply answer the question on my website, that's where you're going to submit, justforkingaround.net, justforkingaround.net. Click on the contest button, submit your answer, and wait to be called as a winner. Hi, this is Sarah J. Halstead. The Just Forking Around contest question is, this widow is a legend. Her champagne is still one of the most popular labels sold today. She invented a method called Riddling, which revolutionized the world of sparkling wines and champagne. Barbie Nicole Parsity is her birth name. What is the name of this widow? Hello, everybody. Welcome. I am so excited to introduce my next guest, for she has successfully transformed our way of thinking about menopause. Yes, menopause. Old school paradigms such as well, your life as you know it is over. It will never be like it was. They still can be a familiar line spoken to some patients who are journeying through or starting menopause. Ellen is the founder of Menopause Mondays and a principal of Dolgen Ventures. And not to mention, she is a mother, wife, and newest post grandma. I think that just made her smile, <laughs> the mention of her granddaughter. Her motto is, suffering in silence is out, reaching out is in. She empowers women to become their own health advocates. And this is no simple task. And she has her own unique style on how she has been accomplishing this commitment so successfully over the past few years, which we are going to learn about real soon. So without further ado, a friend, a mentor, and a woman who has no problem putting on a vagina outfit for a recent Menopause Monday video, who loves her family above everything else, and really enjoys dining out most nights of the week. Welcome, Ellen Dolgen. 
Hi, Debbie. <laughs> How are you? Did you uh, did you smile when I mentioned your granddaughter? I did. I did. <laughs> I did. And eating out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is, so those were pretty accurate still? <laughs> yeah, th- that's very, pa- those are my passions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, and you do it well, you do it so well. You, yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> I try, I try my best. Luckily in San Diego here, we have some fantastic restaurants. There are, and there's more more coming down the down the runway, yeah. up, down the path. Yes. So before we get started, I just want to shout out your how people can t- contact you. It's ellendolgen.com, E-L-L-E-N-D-O-L-G-E-N.com. And I'll have all those links in the show notes, of course, but for anybody who can't go scrolling right now. You know, this topic is something that has so much emotions tied around menopause. We were just talking just before we started recording a little bit about that. And, you know, I, I have this feeling about menopause. It brings up, I, don't need, I can't even put my finger on it. I mean, is that common for, for women? Yeah, I, I think, unfortunately, there's a stigma around menopause. People think it means you're old. And <laughs> uh, I honestly think that's partly why women don't want to admit that they may be going into it or don't want to even learn about it because they feel like it's going to happen when they're in their 60s, which I'm 63, so I don't think that's old anymore. But back in the day, you know, I was thinking 63 was ancient. But the truth is that menopause begins when you're really young. And it's a transition that every woman's going to go through if they're lucky enough to go through the aging process in any way. And the average age of menopause is 51. But there is a period before you actually reach menopause, which is called perimenopause. And perimenopause begins as early as your late 30s. And your body starts transitioning toward menopause for many, many, many years. So it's that six to 10 years before you reach menopause where a lot of women find body changes, symptoms that they just didn't have before. And frankly, because no one teaches us about perimenopause, most women don't even know what's happening to their body. They're okay. clueless. When you mean changes, just so so perimenopause, if somebody's going through perimenopause, is the, the symptoms are similar to menopause or is it? And then, yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes. So what starts happening when your hormones start to decline and change, right? And you are eventually going to become infertile, right? You're not going to have a period anymore. You've reached menopause when you've been without a period for 12 consecutive months. So while your body starts to prepare to reach menopause, things start changing because of hormonal changes. Mm. And I have a menopause symptoms chart, which is free on my website at ellendolgen.com, which lists a lot of the symptoms that many women go through. And they are really common. I mean, there are physical symptoms like you know, no energy, exhaustion, hair loss. Hmm. Um, some, some women even get migraines. Some women find they start having help, heart palpitations and they never had them before. Or they even find that they're gaining weight hmm. and they never had any issue before. Or sometimes you get stiff ache, you know, pains in your joints and hmm. muscles that you never had before. And, I mean, it goes on and on to the more common ones that we know about, which would be night sweats, hot flashes. That's what we often think of as the only symptom of menopause, but it isn't. And then as things start to change, and you can also have issues, you know, with painful sex even, and um, low libido, and memory loss, and mood swings, and anxiety. And then you think it's just normal. Yeah. yeah, and and feeling grumpy. Like I always say, mm-hmm. if you look at your partner and all of a sudden you don't like the way they're chewing <laughs> chewing their food, you may be in the throes of perimenopause. I just that's yeah, yeah I can relate to that. Like all of a sudden, yeah, I know you're like, why is that person pissing me off when she's like just all like- the time? <laughs> yes, the mere breath. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like poor thing can't do anything, right? You know, I'm just like Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and really, you know, like I remember my husband and I are going to have our 40th anniversary in April, so oh, we've certainly been through, thank you. Uh we've been through perimenopause and menopause and everything all 
His and mine, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, yeah, because men go through something similar. They mm-hmm. call it andropause, where their testosterone levels drop. And I mean, it's real. It's not just a joke about, you know, getting a new car or whatever, but right. it, it is real. And um, they can also get exhausted and sleep and grumpy and, and have changes in their libido and all kinds of things. It's, it's difficult for them, too. At the same age, uh, or is it a different, usually? What does well, it- it, it, it's not, a, it's, it can be similar, but it depends because, like with women, there's no one size fits all. I mean, some women go through menopause early and they can start having symptoms w- really early and even go through menopause before the age of 40. And now that's early menopause, but it can happen. So it just, there's no one size fits all on either andropause or for women in their menopausal journey. So you say premenopause, menopause, and then when you get through menopause, like there's a post-menopause, post-menopause when you, when you, but you're referring to saying when you get through the menopause or as you journey yeah, through I mean, it, what are we journeying through? Where, what's well, the, yeah. <laughs> no, and then well, we, I, I, I think what's happening is this. I mean, I, I often question these names myself, but perimenopause, like I said, is like the six to 10 years before a woman reaches menopause. A woman achieves the graduates to menopause. By the way, there's no cap and gown. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was really for, I'm an overachiever. Yeah. You know, I was like, I'm almost there yeah. maybe and I can get something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no cards. I haven't, I mean, I need to contact Hallmark or something. Yes. There, there's nothing. <laughs> honestly, it's a little upsetting. But anyhow, without the cap and gown ceremony, you graduate to menopause. If you've been without a period for 12 consecutive months, and I mean consecutive, yeah, okay. because if you, the period can be quite the drama queen, so it can leave for six months and then suddenly show up in your favorite white dress at a barbecue at mm-hmm. your house, right. and guess who that happened to? But <laughs> Oh, really? Um, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I, I had thrown out the Kotex and the Tampex. <laughs> I mean, the wings flew right out the yeah. window. And I was so excited to be done with all that junk. And then here I am at a barbecue in my backyard with my favorite white dress. And I just sat, got up, and there she was. Oh, and I was like, who who invited you? Oh, my God. <laughs> and so untimely. And, yeah, so untimely. So, you know, it has to be 12 consecutive months. So if the period arrives again after six months, you have to start the clock over. That's an interesting so, fact because I was not aware of that. And it's an important fact especially if you're in a relationship with a man, you can get pregnant, just so women know. Mm. You can get pregnant until you've been without a period for 12 consecutive months. So thus, that is why we have a lot of surprise children (laughs) later in life. I get it now. Okay. Yeah. get it. Women think they're done because they haven't had a period for eight months. And then, whoa, all of a sudden they're pregnant and they don't understand. Well, it's because they really aren't in menopause yet. So you still need contraception. So anyway, and then after you've been in menopause, you reach menopause, it's kind of like the next fleeting second you've arrived at (laughs) post-menopause. It's kind of a weird thing, you know? So I don't know why they have to even call it post-menopause because why can't they still call it menopause? I'm not really sure. I think it would be you know, sort of easier for us lay people to understand, okay. but they don't. So for example, I'm in postmenopause because I've been done with menopause f- for years. So, and is there, I think I'm just confused. So how was, how does one know? Is it how, like, well, you're, you're, you're in postmenopause. I, my feeling is the day after you're done with your <laughs> period for okay. a year. Right. So okay. you're called postmenopausal. I mean, you've been done for with, you're done with the cycle. Okay. And it's it's gone. But some women still have symptoms postmenopausal. You know, some women's symptoms subside. Some women have gotten hormone therapy help and have eased their symptoms. So, you know, there's all kinds of options. Yeah. As I was doing some research and going through all of your the website, which you have it's such a resource, Ellen. I mean, it's easy to navigate and you have the Ask Ellen, the, the questions. Yeah. I love yes. that. Ask Ellen. Some great yeah. questions. And the answers, it's just, and it has their, your your style of, of yeah, how you. how you approach, which we'll I guess talk about in a minute. But and then right up top, you have the, it's easy to navigate. We can go right to the free ebook, and then you can go right to the videos on your YouTube for the Menopause Mondays, which are fabulous. The videos, I love the videos. I've been watching those. I love them. And you aren't Thank afraid 
to put on a vagina suit outfit. And no, that I'm, I'm happy to take the word vagina back because I'm not sure why it had to go away. It's a part of our body. Right. I mean, it's I don't understand why we can't say it. So, you know, if you're at a dinner party with me and somebody asks me what I do, I say I'm in the vagina business. <laughs> and sometimes I feel like E.F. Hutton. Do you remember those commercials? Yes. Where, yes. When E.F. Hutton, Hutton speaks, speaks everybody listens. listens. <laughs> I can imagine if it's your everybody's dining and every what yeah. do you do, Ellen? Oh, I'm in the vagina business. And just must yeah. be this like moment yeah. of looking at you pause. That's brilliant. And you must yeah, laugh I inside. Purposefully, you know, just to see, you know, most of the men are thinking maybe, you know, I'm a dancer <laughs> and I'm gonna break out a pole or something. Right. I don't know. Or I'm a hooker. I don't know. Right. But then when I tell them I'm an author and blogger about perimenopause, menopause and postmenopause, then there is a little bit of a disappointment in some of the people, <laughs> but then the men all want to ask me about their significant other. The women want to come over to me later, quietly, without anybody seeing them, yeah. and talk to me about their symptoms because they don't want to admit that they're experiencing anything. Right. I mean, that's we before we, we re recorded, I was asking you questions <laughs> when we were Skyping. I was like, okay. And... um yeah, so you are you're definitely a resource. And I think you're you've become an expert in in this world or this what the discussion of menopause, but you also are such a resource. But on your website you have like many places that women can go to find resources and definitions and doctors and and your take on or it's not even your your take, it's the information you've gathered, right? For so people to make empowered decisions about what their path is going to be. Yes, I, I consider myself a menopause awareness advocate or even just a woman's health advocate because, you know, our hormones kind of control our whole body. So I do research and interview the smartest people that are on top of the latest information. And then I try to report back to women, either through my blog or through videos, the information in what I call lay person speak because, you know, I'm not a doctor or a scientist. And frankly, when a woman doesn't feel well, she's not even thinking clearly. So right. it needs to be made simple, easy to understand. And I kind of try to deliver it as if I'm your kind of your best girlfriend who happens to know a lot about this topic. Okay. So it's not scary because it doesn't need to be. And you can live a very happy, healthy life in perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause and feel fantastic, but not if you're having symptoms and you pretend you're fine. Right. It's a great part of, of what you do of, of really making everybody feel a little bit comfortable. Like I feel comfortable talking about this with you when we were talking before. And, you, and you know, I have a little bit of fear of it. Denial. <laughs> is that what that is? Denial? Yes. It is complete yes. denial. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it is. And it's not, you're not alone. I mean, most women are like that. They'll say to me, oh, I, I don't need any I don't really need to understand menopause. You know, I, I'm I'm fine. I say, really? Are you sleeping? Well, no, I haven't been sleeping for five years. <laughs> oh, um, are you noticing you have these unusual emotional highs and lows? Oh, yeah, I'm a total bitch. Yeah. And they go on to talk to me, and they actually have every symptom right. <laughs> on my symptoms chart. Yeah. And I'm, why are you pretending you're fine and not getting the help you need and deserve? I don't understand. And they go, I don't know. Why am I doing that? Right. I know. Like, I had a hard time. I, I went all through your website, of course, but the, the symptoms, I just, I think it was, it was also difficult to be like, okay, because I'm probably going to match on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'll, I'll wait till after we, we speak. Uh -huh. But there's, uh, there's one, uh, when I was watching you come out and you had a little vagina suit on doing, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they, taking your vagina to, to the gym. I think that was the yes. video. Yes. And it actually, it's based upon a, video that you debuted, I think it was on the Katie Couric show, um, yes. titled A Singing uh. Uterus Explains Perimenopause and Menopause. Yes. And the video you produced includes singing and an explanation about menopause. One's wearing a vagina. It was brilliant. And it was hilarious. And that, I think, yeah. took takes the I mean, it was so well done, Ellen. I didn't know. I didn't know about that until I kind of went a little further. Oh, yeah. So it was so well you. done. And I think ja was Jack... Yeah, Jack Hill produced it, nice. and uh, Rachel Bloom, who is a star and 
producer of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, the right. TV show right. on the CW. She was the um, uterus in, in the <laughs> video. And then I have ovaries and a clitoris. So yes. every part of our body got equal time. Okay. I was just focused on the vagina, I think, because I was like, how, how did, did you make that? Because it was... Was it the same piece you wore or was it a different? Yes. Um, they had for the, for, I commissioned this video and I wanted women from age 30 on to understand what perimenopause is. Because if you don't understand what perimenopause is, you can't really take control of your own fertility. Right. So if you want to do your own family planning, you really have to understand where you are in your perimenopausal journey. So in other words, you, you just can't have a baby at 41 if you want to. Your ovaries may have said otherwise. Mm. So if you don't understand what p- the perimenopause is, that slow process that takes place before your period stops. And often, you know, during that journey, you know, if you were trying to get pregnant, it may be difficult. Also, you could get pregnant if you didn't want to. So, you know, right. there's all these things. But I did want women to understand it happens when you're young. And somebody at the age like 30, 35 should have a baseline test of her hormones. I have a list of what to get tested yep, I on my that. website that will tell you where your ovaries are at, how your eggs are doing. I mean, yeah. you know, what's happening. And you can actually be in control. And I don't know why gynecologists don't recommend that baseline to women, but they don't. Uh, yeah. And so women are clueless that they can't have a baby anytime they want. Right. I mean, that's, after you explain, it makes sense knowing the information. Yeah. So, I mean, and there's lots of things you can do if you are, your eggs are starting to to turn, so to speak, that you have options and you, I think it's only fair women should be empowered to make their own decisions and know about that so they can act on those options if they want to. I mean, a lot of women are aren't ready to have children at 35 or 37, but their body's changing. Right. And, you know, maybe they want to have children later in life. Well, yeah, you know, there's some options if you are proactive. Right. Yeah. And, and there, it's it's a different, it's 2017. <laughs> you know, things exactly. like, yeah, it's, it's definitely different. So that's why I commissioned the music video, because I thought I could reach that audience better with music and dance than I could with a, just a boring blog. Oh, it's you know? not a boring blog. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I try not to have my blogs be boring, but you know, the the music video is pretty cutting edge. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty that was awesome. That was that was amazing. It was amazing. And you yeah. debuted it and yeah, so that was great. And then the book, Schmersky? Well, my first book was Schmersky, Think Inside the Box. Which yes, I, I love that. Jack helped me write all my books, so he kind of co authored everything with me. And uh, we penciled that one by E, meaning it's everyone's book. And I didn't even use my really my full name on that one. And he, it was uh, our first book, and we self-published it. And then it got picked up by Hyperion Voice, which is a division of Disney ABC. They bought the book, and then we added more information to the book, and it came out as Schmirsky. The Pursuit of Hormone Happiness. But what was happening, Debbie, is that I was getting emails from women from all over the world, actually, because of my blog, which is so many people that couldn't afford the book. Oh. And so I was buying the book and shipping it to people. Mm. And I realized that's just not a good business model. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, Buy your own and book David, and send it. Yeah. And then David sat me down and said, you know, and he was so cute. Mm. He was helping ship books all over the place. I mean, you you have no idea what's going on here. Mm-hmm. And because I, I felt like I wanted every woman to have the option to be educated on this, no matter what their socioeconomic situation was. So I talked to Jack. I said, Jack, let's write a free ebook so that everyone can have access to this information. And let's do a free ebook. And so I think it was about a year and a half ago that we published the free ebook. I think we're close over eighty five thousand downloads. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and uh, it's wonderful, Debbie, because you can look up on this free ebook, Menopause Mondays: The Girlfriend's Guide to Surviving and Thriving During Perimenopause and Menopause. You can look up your symptoms if you don't want to read the whole book. You can look up weight gain, or you can look up insomnia. Yeah. You know, and just read that chapter if you want. That's great. That's really. 
I love that. So we really made it easier for people to get help through the ebook. So I recommend anyone in their 30s downloading my free ebook and reading it so that you are prepared and proactive about your health. Yeah, I mean, that's it's extremely important, especially if one takes care of themselves anyways. That's, we were just talking about that. If one is, um, oh, you know, works out or takes care of themselves and then not kind of taking the steps to understand this part of, of life. Exactly. We're yeah. so sort of obsessed with the outside, but actually you need the inside of your body to have hormone balance in order to really stay healthy. I mean, you, you can't fix the outside with cosmetics, uh, the, inside. the inside, yes, the outside. You can. <laughs> it's fun, you know, and I think everybody should feel and look the beautiful, the way that makes them feel beautiful. It's very personal, but you really have to be prepared to understand that when, when you are going through this process and your hormones are changing, you know, there are some things you need to add maybe to be more proactive and you do need to find a menopause specialist. That would be the first thing I recommend. Yeah. That's what I got out of our conversation after we had a minute or two before I'm going to do it. I'm committed to find a mm-hmm. menopause. Good. So Ellen, do you, how do you feel from speaking and all the different, I'm sure experiments that have been going on is food, diet, exercise, and assisting during menopause. I don't know if it would be or, or perimenopause or there's information, you know, that's I think just constantly repurposed about how to, what foods to avoid and what foods to eat to help balance hormones. And food experts say, you know, obvi- the obvious, you know, avoid sugar, soy, alcohol, caffeine, high glycemic foods and fruit juice. I mean, those are the ones. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm not going to avoid alcohol. Um, okay. And most women are not going to avoid alcohol. So, and, I mean, yeah. I don't buy into all these rules. I don't either. That's I, what I'm I, saying. It just feels, yeah. it feels, um, it feels, reper- that's why I wanted to bring it up because it feels, if you, because <laughs> I Googled just to see. So I, yeah. I wanted to know what you would say. So I, I, I believe that it's just, it's repurposed. Like it just, somebody, people wrote it and then people just kind of quote from the information that they is provided. I mean, fruit juice, first of all, fruit juice, when we're not talking nowadays, I mean, you can get really um, nutrient dense, like raw organic juices, especially in here that, that don't have the ingredients that other, you know, store-bought maybe, I mean, uh, mass produced fruit juices have. So that one's kind of like a, a general, and then the white bread, high glycemic foods, but is like sourdough bad, you know, I mean, is that have that element to it? And caffeine, I love coffee and that would be a difficult to cut out. And alcohol, I think that that is, when I started reading all these, I just avoided it because I was like, that's not going to happen. Like some alcohol, yeah. caffeine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the first thing I thought. So I love that you first thought you're like, oh no, you know, there's, you're not going to cut those out. And so I think that's the, yeah. the rules are, are so structured. So I don't know, is there, what's your experience okay, with so, food? I, 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 first of all, I recommend no diet at all. I think dieting is one of the worst things you can do to your body. So it's not healthy because a diet is something you go on and you go off. Mm. And most women I know that do that, that go on a diet and then go off a diet, usually gain everything back and more. And it just becomes this yo-yo yeah. Where they're up and then they're down and then they're up and then they're down and I was never good at the yo-yo anyway so it was my I I was never good at that that damn thing you're like and it's people, exhaust oh the actual yo-yo <laughs> yeah yeah I'm not interested in the yo-yo so <laughs> screw that yeah. forget it so what I think is most effective and I think that is most realistic and comfortable incorporating in your lifestyle which by the way there's called there's something called a quality of life. And every time we can't have this and can't have that and can't do that and can't do this, we feel like we're being cheated. Yeah. And then all we want is that. Exactly. So to me is the not the way to go here. So for my purpose, for my life experience through perimenopause, menopause and postmenopause, I can tell you that one day I did wake up and suddenly I was a member of the sisterhood of the shrinking pants. <laughs> and I immediately was annoyed mm-hmm. at my washing machine. Yes. My dryer or my cleaners. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> yes. And then I realized, oh no, it's me. I 
am gaining weight. And it's not unusual and it's totally common. And don't panic. Here's the thing. As you, your hormones start to change, your metabolism can slow down. So what do you need to do when your metabolism slows down? You need to try to increase your metabolism and also change your eating a little. A little, I said. <laughs> yeah, because we hear Not, change eating and it's like, you know, the no, defense, yeah, but a, a little. little little. So here's the thing. And this is why I did these series of um, workout videos, which I called take your vagina to the gym. Because if I just said workout video, no one would watch them. But when you say take your vagina to the gym, everybody's like, Oh, really? Let me see that. <laughs> so, uh, so I true. first I had to desensitize my trainer <laughs> that I was going to walk in with my uterus costume which was made for the music video but yeah. anyway so once I, he got used to that which was hysterical <laughs> he was fine but anyway the thing is that you can very quickly and very easily help your metabolism number one so what do you need to do you can walk ride a bike you can do some form of aerobic exercise for a, a, about 30 minutes a day everyone has time to do that debbie because, you know, once you say it's an hour, women are like, oh, my God, I don't have an hour. I've got to take care of my kids to school. And then I have to I get home. I go to work. And then I, you know, and then I pick them up. And then I have to drive them here. And then, I, you know, or there's every excuse in the book. There's no time for me. But there is time for 30 minutes a day. So I always recommend start with 30 minutes a day. Do it three times a week. Once you get that mastered, do it five times a week. And I always think it's fun to make it enjoyable, like bring a friend, bring your lover, make it something where you're talking mm -hmm. and you're enjoying yourself. You don't even realize you're doing exercise when you're, when you're socializing. Mm -hmm. So that can be fun. And then you want to do weight-bearing exercise. Weight-bearing exercise will increase your metabolism. So what is that? I'm not talking about lifting huge weights. I'm not. I'm talking about you can even use your own body weight. But small weights, repetitive, do repetitive exercises. And I have some of these on my YouTube video on the exercise flexibility and strengthening of your muscles. And it's very simple, but easy exercises. You don't have to, again, be a jock to do any of these. You don't have to be an expert. And you can increase your metabolism. Okay, so once you get your metabolism and your aerobics which is fat burning, then you have to look at what you eat in a very, very honest way. Like write, so, it, like write it down honest? <laughs> well, I mean, it, if that helps you. But, you know, I'll ask women, well, you know, are you watching what you eat? You know, that's kind of the code for, you know, are you eating healthy? Mm -hmm. And they'll go, oh, yeah, I never, I, 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 yeah, definitely. And then when I ask them questions about what they eat, well, no, those aren't things that you should be eating. So, so what should we be eating? The things that help women stay in a healthy plan, and this is not a diet, is increasing their vegetable and fruit intake and decreasing their foods that are not fresh, that have labels on them, <laughs> which have a lot of ingredients you probably don't need. Right. So eating you know, fresh vegetables and fresh fruit and uh, frankly, I'm not a juicer because I think it is healthier to eat the fruit. Right. In other words, I wouldn't ever be drinking orange juice. I would. I do eat oranges, right? Because they're great for you. Mm -hmm. But uh, to me, it's a fad, and a lot of those juice drinks have a lot of sugar in them. Yeah, they do. And people think they're having a vegetable juice, and they're really having a lot of sugar right. with maybe a stalks of celery in it <laughs> so you know it's not really you're better off having carrots a bag of carrots and celery and those baby red peppers and green yellow peppers in a bag and you can get it like trader joe's they're great you can grab and go and just having things to munch on right and, a chewing, and then, the chewing must, yeah. is helpful too you know there's the crunch yeah. drinking it yes and you actually have to eat to lose weight that's the other thing people don't understand you can't starve to lose weight because that just slows your metabolism down. So you have to eat to get your metabolism healthy. So it's what you eat that's important. So if you get up in the morning, you have a bunch of fresh fruit, 
and a piece of whole wheat bread with some almond butter on it. Mm, yeah. Coffee, that's a great breakfast. It is. Or one egg on a piece of toast or mm-hmm. and a half a banana. Those are really important meals to have that breakfast is the real important meal. And then have a snack, grab fruits or vegetables. And, you know, I can't grab five almonds. I love it when people say, eat five almonds. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's impossible, right? Give me the. Who eats five yeah. almonds? We, right. I mean, they have to count them, A, put them, and then I'm going to want more. Exactly. I mean, I'm going to eat the bag or right. I'm going to eat none. So that's not an option for me. I mean, good luck if you can eat five almonds. That's good, but I can't. <laughs> and then for lunch, you know, you would either have like a, you know, I like, wraps are good with vegetarian wrap or something with chicken in it or I like to eat a lot of vegetables a sauteed Mm -hmm. and uh you know with grains I love that and then a snack you know maybe some almond butter on it half an apple but don't get hungry that's the other don't allow yourself to get hungry and that means you're keeping your metabolism up and it really won't cause you to be so starving that you eat everything in your house. And that's what happens to women who diet. They right. either eat way too much or they eat nothing. Right. And that just causes more pendulum swing and more yeah. slower. Yes, exactly. Slow metabolism. So, you know, and then dinner, have a drink. I mean, I have a drink. Mm-hmm. What uh, It doesn't cause me to gain weight. What causes me to gain weight is to drink more than one drink. Right. Because then you lose your inhibitions. Right. <laughs> so, and it is sugar. I mean, yeah. alcohol, you know, does turn to sugar. I mean, a lot of women will say, well, if I drink at about three in the morning, I wake up. Well, that's because of the glucose. Is that, you know, that wake with the wine, yeah. like with red wine, it's going to pop up? Yeah. yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So you notice if you don't drink at night, you usually sleep through the night. It's because you don't have that sugar. Right surge so and then you crash you Mm -hmm. know so but i i I think it's really doable to modify your diet now if you're eating a lot of bad carbs like i'm talking about packaged cookies and cakes and Mm -hmm. you know if you're grabbing a lot of high fructose things you don't need even fake sugars are bad right yeah. I mean, don't eat fake sugar. Yeah. If you're going to have sugar, eat a package of sugar in your coffee if you want it. But mm-hmm. don't have any fake sugars. Yeah, it is bad. And I'm a coffee drinker too, Debbie. No mm-hmm. one's taking my coffee. No, that's the and, word. You can't take my coffee away. No. I need, I need, I have to have that in the morning. It makes me sad to think of not having it. Yeah, I don't think, and I, I think one of the reasons people cut out alcohol and caffeine, there is a study that says that alcohol and caffeine can cause some women to have more hot flashes. So mm-hmm. if, you want, if you're having a lot of hot flashes and you want to reduce your f- hot flashes naturally, then take alcohol one at a time. Don't do alcohol and caffeine. Mm-hmm. And reduce it, your alcohol intake a little. See if it takes, makes a difference. Nice. If that doesn't work, then maybe stop drinking for five days and see if you stop having hot flashes. And if that doesn't help you, by all means, reinduce your alcohol. But if it reduces <laughs> your hot flashes, well, then, you know, maybe. Right. It's funny. But, hot flashes are, you can always make an excuse about a hot flash. Like, oh, it just get hot in here. Oh, I've I'm, I'm been running yeah. around. I'm so hot right now. Or, you know, something along those yeah. lines. Is that common? I know that I've done say that. So I'm like, oh, it's hot. But I don't go to, oh, I'm having yeah. a hot flash. I think it's something else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I did these series of menopause uh, videos with Kim Cattrall from Sex and the City. Yes, yes. And she and I spent a lot of time on these videos talking about our first hot flash. And, you know, you remember she was the one who was having hot flashes in Sex and the City. And they were going to Dubai and they they took away her phone therapy. So she thought she put fresh yams all over her body. (laughs) It was going to work. Uh, Yeah. Doesn't just in case anybody's thinking. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and so we were both talking about our first hot flashes, and mine was in a business meeting. I remember being at a business table surrounded by all men, and all of a sudden I felt this surge of heat start at my toes, kind of radiate up through my whole body. I felt like I was completely flushed, mm. and my skin was kind of it was kind of sparkling, you know, right. and then all of a sudden the sweat started stripping mm-hmm. down my face in between in between my boobs all the way down to the inseams of my pants. Wow. Honestly, 
I realized my pants were wet as if I had wet them. And luckily, I carry this huge oversized purse because I think it makes my hips look smaller. So um, <laughs> You're always thinking. I, You're always one step ahead. I love that. I'm oh. always one step ahead. So, I mean, David, you know, realized that I was having some kind of very bizarre issue <laughs> that I've never had before. And I was like I signaling under the table, I need to get out of here. So we got up, you know, I put my purse in front of me. David was behind me tight. And I got the heck out of that yeah. uh, room. And I, I was like, what was that? Wow. And that was my first hot flash. Now, I remember Kim Cattrall saying she went to a gynecologist to have a woman who's actually having hot flashes so she could watch them. They helped her find somebody. And <laughs> she tried to learn how to have a hot flash. And then her first hot flash was, I think, somewhere on in some theater where she was, you know, doing a show. And so can you imagine being in the middle of yeah. a show yeah. and breaking out into a hot flash? How awful that must be. But, you know, yeah. after a while, you sort of get to the point where when they would happen before I found hormone happiness, I would just say, I'm having a hot flash and no, it's not contagious. No problem. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. And then everybody would laugh and that was the end of it. That's see, you always, I love how you approach situations and conversations and there's always humor and entertainment in it and it re makes the situation diffuses that that energy that is like stress stressful or tight or avoidance is that something yeah. that you've it's congruent in the themes of your videos and with your interviews talking i mean schmersky that's a that's what we call a vagina is that wasn't that yeah, the name? My, a, a mentor of mine called her vagina schmersky and and called the penis an Ehrlich. So Schmirschke and Ehrlich's, you know, sounded like a, you know, a new restaurant. Yeah. No, and no, nobody knew what you were talking about. So that's funny. You know, my first book I called Schmirschke and my second one because she had just passed away and mm. I kind of did it in honor of her. But yeah. um, you learn as you become a seasoned author and blogger that nobody knows what Schmirschke is and they can't figure out how to spell it. Right. So thus became Menopause Mondays. Oh. And my free ebook is Menopause Mondays because if you Google menopause, Schmirschke doesn't come up right. unless I spend a lot of money making sure it does. Yeah, so I know. So <laughs> I it's <quickly> easy. Learned. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Going, I was watching one of the Kim Cattrall videos and it was funny because you, what did you say? You said something like about 61% of the people are sleepless in their city. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it was referring to, obviously, the sex in the city, yeah. sleepless in their city. Yes. 61%. Yeah. yeah I, I I think that's still, I'm not sure what the exact percentage, but you probably have it right. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. Um, insomnia is a big problem when your hormones are out of whack. Right. And sleeplessness is not really healthy. So uh, you do want to find a menopause specialist and you do want to make sure you're doing everything you can to help lead what I call a healthy life. And part of that is sleeping. Yeah. And going back to the food, is there a studies, I think there was a current one I was reading, that food can, instead of doing other hormone therapies or other ways to kind of balance or get through, is food only like an additional part to help feel well? Or is there reasons to believe at all that food can be the only focus of what certain foods to eat in order to help expedite the balancing. Is it the balancing, like the estrogen levels? and? Well, I think there's many studies that show that food and what we eat is a huge factor in our overall health. So, you know, I, I think I did a blog, Can You Ease Your Menopausal Symptoms with Food? And I think specialists say that, frankly, you eating different types of foods can help you with certain problems, including, by the way, insomnia. I mean, I think that if you're eating a healthy lifestyle and you're not over sugaring yourself, you know, which wakes you up in the middle of the night, you know, that that's a big, that's a big benefit. Uh, fruits and vegetables have been known to reduce hot flashes and they actually help you avoid weight gain and weight gain, the heavier you are, it increases your hot flashes. Mm. So it's all like this, I would call domino effect. You know, so it's so but reduced estrogen levels do trigger the cells to store more fat. So that's why women have a problem during menopause where they start to, like I say, become a member of the sister of the shrinking pants because 
suddenly, you know, their estrogen levels are dropping, see? And so they sort of tend to store more fat. You end up with that muffin top. Yeah. You know, which yes. we all have. Yeah. So if you're grabbing an apple instead of a cookie to alleviate hunger, you know, you're going to keep that muffin top at bay. Right. But the menopause, having, having hormone replacement, there's different options. What, what yes. we were speaking earlier about, and this, this is how much I have not accepted the idea because I don't even know the, I've, I just kind of cruised over those parts of um, information in what I was reading about hormone replacing because there are different views and different people's perspective on hormones and taking hormones and the whole trajectory of what you should do. I don't, I don't know. I, I find that if something's going to help, then I would like to do it. Yeah. Well, okay. So th- this is this of kind of a complicated topic, as you know. And sadly, people are so confused about hormone therapy. And I spent a lot of time on this in my blog. So you can actually go to my website, type in hormone therapy and read a lot of information that's very, very helpful, okay. I think. And I also attend the North American Menopause Society convention this past year, where all the doctors and scientists who are really up on the latest information come together and share this information and, and doctors become certified in, in menopause by attending this conference. So it's really, That's I hot. would say, cutting cutting edge information, you know. Yeah, and then you get to and deliver it to us. So then we get to exactly. read it. Okay, and I love that. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, have to go dig out. And that's it. Yeah. So I did a blog when I came back from the convention. That is basically an update on what the latest information on menopausal hormone therapy is, and I do recommend that women go to my website and read it. So they, I mean, it's a lot of information, but it's it's written in a very easy to understand way. So don't get scared. And, um, you know, hormone therapy does not have to be scary. It, it's just that you need to understand there are different kinds of hormone therapy. And uh, the kinds that women are taking today are not the kinds that our mothers took back in the day and then found out that it was going to cause us all cancer and we were all going to have a heart attack or something. Right, right. You know, there's a lot more information out there now from those studies. And it's just that women are basing their health care on fear instead of facts. So I actually interviewed the director of the North American Menopause Society for Clarity. And there's just a whole new set of guidelines. I think the most significant changes are that the potential benefits for women to take hormone therapy is to take it before the age of 60 Mm -hmm. or within 10 years of menopause. That would be the best time for relief of hot flashes and prevention of bone loss because you do have bone loss when you have loss of estrogen. And especially if you're a tiny, petite, thin person, you do want to get that bone density checked because uh, you won't know until you break bones. So you don't want to wait. That's too late. You want to get it checked. Yeah. And there's basically menopausal hormone therapy protects and benefits bone health, vaginal health, VSM prevention, you know, vasometers, which is hot flashes, joint and muscle pain, mood swings, coronary heart disease, yeah, and I'm sleep in. services. I'm in. So, I mean, there are some enormous benefits if you need it. Right. And um, so how do you know if you need it? Well, I always say, Download my free menopause symptoms chart and start charting your symptoms every night. Be honest, because if you're not honest on the chart, it's not going to help you. And if you have marks on this chart, you need to see a menopause specialist. Yeah. It means your hormones are plummeting and, you know, your body is struggling too much. Right. You know, it's and that's a, why you're having symptoms. Yeah. I mean, it's such a, I'm, I really am grateful for the work that you do because I truly now feel, for some reason, I feel a little more not relaxed. I have, so I have the access to information and I have the ability to make decisions based on the information that's already there that you're provided on your website. And now for some reason, then it takes that fear a, a little lower of what's, is this current? Is this, is this accurate? Is this, what's this time stamp on this? Is it from a while ago? And so I, I appreciate you taking all that time to do, get all the information and then put it in one place for us to be able to access. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I wanted this for, I wish I'd had this because I suffered for three years, Debbie. I didn't know what was wrong with me. And so it wasn't until I started 
just burst into hysterics in the middle of a friend's kitchen while I was clearing dishes at a dinner party with them. Luckily, my friend was a retired gynecologist Mm -hmm. that I learned that I was in perimenopause. And I was actually pissed when he said that to me. I was like, wait, I'm in my 40s. What are you talking about? Don't talk to me about menopause. And he goes, Ellen, it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, it's a gradual process. And perimenopause, the early stages are when women have their most symptoms. So thank God for him, because for three years, I'd been kind of a basket case, because not only was I having hot flash, I I had started having a hot flash, but the very first symptom I had was brain fog. Oh, the brain fog. That's that's tough, right? Because you It it was horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. I mean, Debbie, in the middle of a sentence, I would lose my train of thought. That that's how bad it was, yeah. and I, it wasn't like I don't know where my keys are. That's common. It was serious, <laughs> serious brain fog, you know. Right. That's... And and then my next symptom was insomnia. So I never really. And then I became a bitch face. And then I mean, I was so grumpy. I didn't even know who I was anymore, you know. Uh-huh. And then my last symptom was hot flashes. Yeah. So it's interesting because I really didn't associate insomnia or brain fog or mood swings to menopause. I just had no idea. Yes. I mean, that's, it's all making sense now. And I'm, I'm thinking right now, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Because sometimes you just think it's, you know, let's make excuses. I'm, I'm just so yeah. I'm, I'm crazy right now, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm overworked. Actually, women are great at this. We want to be fine so badly that we will make, every, we can find a reason. Uh, I've, Cook dinner, you know, that, that's why I'm having a hot flash. I don't know. <laughs> it's right. And that's the dryer's not, on. The dryer's on. And, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we will, make, we will stretch the tooth, truth so badly before we want to admit that we're in perimenopause. And part of it is the age thing. And part of it is we're not really used to taking care of ourselves. We're used to being caregivers. Mm, true. And um, true. And then when you it's to... hard to take care of ourselves. Yeah. And then to recognize that you have to. That's in the yep. take action. Yep. Yeah. So I want to know to get off subject a little bit about your you like you enjoy to dine out. Oh yeah, many nights. Love, love. <laughs> so what what's um your top right now places that you love to do? You try different uh, restaurants, or are you do you have a a few favorites in the different parts of San Diego? And what's your what's your go to? Yeah. I, well, okay. So I always try everything new, actually. But we're also loyal to the our faves. But if if something new becomes one of my favorites, I just add it to one of my favorites, right? <laughs> but I try them, but oftentimes maybe not so much, so they don't get added to the list, you know? Yeah. I have my same usual places that we go. You know, if we want a real casual night, you know, we'll we'll go one area. If we want it, you know, kind of a little bit more festive, or if we want to eat at a bar, we know where we like to eat at the bars. Right. Or if, you know, the thing with David and I is that we're not tapas eaters. We really like a dinner. Yeah. So what, what we usually do is, and this helps us, by the way, with our eating plan, is we usually each order a salad and we share the main course because I try not to eat protein bigger than my palm of my hand. Mm. And so... That is usually a half a portion of a regular American meal. Right. Now in Europe, they don't they don't give you such big yeah. portions, but here we're really we we give big portions. So we split the main course, whether it's fish, chicken, or steak or whatever, and we order extra vegetables, and that's how we eat out. And we each have one drink, mm-hmm. and that's it. Yeah. And we try never to have more than one drink, mm-hmm. and. And sometimes we don't have a drink, you know, if we right. eat home. We don't eat out every night and we cook also. But, you know, I would say we eat out a good three times a week, if not f- four. Right. And then and and, still able to maintain, a, keep it in your meal plan. You know, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, that's how we do it. Yeah, because we don't and we never order dessert. And if we really want dessert, we ask for a fruit plate yeah. because you can eat as much fruit as you want and vegetables as you want. It's that other stuff that you have to limit. Right. It's true. Unless, so, yeah. Unless it's, it's, unless it's like the fried, you know, Brussels sprouts, <laughs> which are so delicious. Yeah. Yeah. But I eat those. I yeah. will. Share that. They're my faves. The yeah, Brussels sprouts. They are delicious. And, and we eat those. And, you know, that's fine. But I wouldn't eat my, a whole portion myself. Right. That's you know? true. Yeah. I'll tell you, Debbie, what's great at night, though, if you crave ice cream is frozen grapes. 
Really? Frozen grapes? So we take the grapes, take black grapes, buy the black grapes, put them in your freezer. Don't wash them. Put them in your freezer. And when you're ready to eat them, take out your strainer, put them under hot water, wash them, but not till they're thawed and eat them frozen. They're delicious. Oh, that's a good idea. I've never, I'm going to yeah. do that. I'm definitely going to do that. Sounds, sounds like it would satisfy a, an ice creamy yeah. kind of desserty. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. So, I mean, I eat a lot of fruit in a day and because uh, I do like I have a sweet tooth. So I do like something sweet, you know, instead of grabbing a cookie, I'll cut up some watermelon or yeah. have some pineapple. Nice. And to me, it's satisfying because it's naturally sweet. Yeah, it tastes and it's delicious and you can feel yeah. it. You can feel yeah. it. I mean, and you yeah. look great. You're, you said you're 61. Oh, I'm 63. 63. I know. You look I was amazing. Getting in the big numbers. I'm getting in the but big numbers. No, no I, 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 oh! I, I, you look amazing, and your, you know, your attitude is still is still going. Not attitude in the bad way. Your attitude towards life is still. You're full of passion, motivation. Your and I know that your family is important to you, and you have yes. a very closeness with them, and you're and you're playing with your granddaughter, and you know, life is good. Life is good for you. You know, I think that we make our own path. So it isn't, it doesn't happen for you. It happens within you. So if you want to have a happy day, you can set your intention and pick and choose accordingly. So that's how I live. And it, it, I mean, it's not to say I don't have sad things and I don't have difficulties and I don't have you know, the typical stuff that we all go through in life, death, family issues, extended family issues, friends with catastrophes that you want to show up for, all kinds of things. But the the thing is to set your intention each morning to have a good day and do the best you can, you know. Mm. And part of that is your intention to be healthy. That's a huge part of it. Yeah, definitely. And, and you can't be healthy if you hide. So, you know, I'm a big believer in tackling things by being proactive about your health. I always tell women, if you can remember three things from my speech or this conversation or from my books or blogs, just remember three things. You're not alone. You know, there are millions of women in menopause, millions, 6,000 women enter every day. And trust how you feel. You know when you don't feel good, so don't hide it. Hmm. You have to trust yourself. And then number three, reach out and get the help you need and deserve. So you are not alone. Trust how you feel. Get the help you deserve. Yep. Those are the three things, and I'm, I'm going to remember those. And that's not overwhelming. I, I think that's a doable thing. I, I don't set these big, overwhelming even New Year's resolutions for myself because I, I it's not doable. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing I'm going to change, I try to find, that's, and that's it. So I, I believe that things need to be doable. You have to have realistic expectations of, of yourself. You're not going to be perfect at anything. But if you just try those things, I think that you'll be on a path to a, a healthier you, which really makes your life to be able to have more joy. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you on that. When I think about your trajectory, I mean, really, you could have taken the time you went through when you were having like, hot flashes and mood swings and what, for those three years, I mean, that you found solutions, whereas some people may have not. And that changes the trajectory of people's lives, basically. Yeah. I mean, really. Yeah. You know, it's just really difficult to when you start going through some of these symptoms, because, you know, it's some of them can be quite life changing. And so you're, if you're not understanding what they're about, you're so scared that you want to pretend you're not having them. So I think once I figured out what's wrong with me, then I got really pissed off. That's why I wrote my first book. Like, why didn't anybody tell me about this? I would have been prepared. So that's what I want your listeners to understand that, you know, be prepared. Don't be putting your head in the sand. It never works out. Right. And just having just be prepared. And now that and the conversation and the resources, I do. I really appreciate your your website. It's it really is a so much information and it's so accessible. You know, it's not like a, a difficult navigational website, and it's also very there's so much stuff information to ha- take with. You know, you don't have to 
buy something. You have the free free downloads, free downloads. So that is do I do yes. appreciate that a lot. Yes. There's not one thing on my website that is going to cost you a dime. That's not I'm paid to speak. Uh, I have speaking engagements and pharmaceutical companies hire me for menopause awareness campaigns, uh, which I'm happy to do because I want women to be aware and um, allows me to offer everything for free. That's awesome. I respect you so much even more even now that we've spoken about this because our conversations really haven't talked about uh, menopause and vaginas and, you know, <laughs> and... Yes, we're usually talking about food. <laughs> yes, usually we're talking about food. So we had to, of course, incorporate in there. I definitely, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. This is uh, absolutely informative, inspirational. I feel like I'm inspired now to take some action. Um, that's that's my plan. And that's a, a result from having this conversation. So I hope that others will continue that spirit of, you know, taking care and taking action, or at least getting the information so that they feel Definitely. Empowered. I mean, my motto is suffering in silence is out and reaching out is in. Yeah, I love it. Great. Okay, so Ellen, thank you. Ellen Dolgen, E-L-L-E-N-D-O-L-G-E-N dot com. That is where you can find all of this information. And I'll have it on the show notes as well. So Ellen, thank you again. And um, I am excited to uh, check in with you a little bit later on and see what else you have going on. Thanks, Debbie. It was so much fun. Okay, thanks. Have a good day. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed listening to that episode. And again, Please rate and review if you did like this podcast episode or any of the other ones. Please go to iTunes, download, rate, review. I appreciate that very much. Just Forking Around Podcast. And again, I am Debbie Salzberg. My handle on Instagram is at Forking Podcast. My website is justforkingaround.net. And I am so excited to have you on board here with me on the Just Forking Around podcast, and I look forward to seeing you on the next show. Thank you.